Let's keep that applause going. <laughs> We've got Kat joining us as well. Morning, Kat. Hello, hello. Dzień dobry. In Polish. Dzień dobry. How are you? Very well. Thank you for inviting me. I hope the connection is good. I don't have the, uh, you sound the headphones. Yes, but no, I, you, you can you hear me? Thumbs up. Two thumbs up for you. You sound absolutely yeah. perfect. You, you're looking okay. great. You're sounding great. And I see on the screen there, look at this, Tony. Uh, what a wonderful friend you brought along with you this morning. In love with Portugal. That's what we like to see, Kat. What's that all about? <laughs> yeah, um, I'm a Polish photographer and travel journalist. And uh, 10 years ago, I came to Portugal for the first time uh, to do the article about Portugal for the Polish magazine. And as soon as I landed, it was in Faro. <laughs> Uh, I just felt that I just found my second home and I fell in love with Portugal. And um, the last 10 years I've been um, visiting Portugal uh, every year for at least three or four months. Uh, I spend here every year, three or four months. I count, um, unfortunately, I can't uh, move here uh, because I have family and my photographic studio in Poland. So it's only three or four months here every year. Uh, but I was coming here every year and working on the um, even more articles about Portugal. Now it's over 30 articles in Polish and Portuguese magazines. And I also did the, the book. Oh, you see the wow. book? It's a, yeah, In Love with Portugal. It's a photo album with the most beautiful places. Uh, well, oh, we need to know. We need to know where to. Look. I mean, look at it. It's. A, I mean, and, uh, it's not a surprise that it's as thick as a telephone directory. Because, as I've said on many occasions, this country is so <laughs> photogenic, isn't it? But that yeah, looks. Yeah. That looks amazing, Kat. How? Yeah. Uh, and, and we will talk to you as well, Tony. But I mean, honestly, this is quite amazing, isn't it? What Kat's done. <laughs> what Kat's done here. <laughs> um, how did the book come about? And, and how have you managed to produce such a beautiful looking tome there? Yeah, it, it, it is really 10 years of visiting all the places like, you know, cities, uh, beaches, uh, castelos, I was literally everywhere um, in Portugal, um, 10 years of visiting every corner of Portugal. And then I had to choose um, uh, because I couldn't, I wasn't able to put everything in the book. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I had, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had to choose uh, the best places that I recommend to visit. Um, and this is the book. But now um, I also have the exhibition, the photo exhibition that currently is in uh, in the center of Porto, in Salina Porto. Yeah. Uh, so for the exhibition, I chose only 30 photographs. So, so it was not easy, you know, to... Uh, to choose only 30 photographs out of, you know, how many from the book. Sure. Well, it but must can... have been so difficult to do that, absolutely, because you... Um, how many photographs do you think you've taken in, in Portugal? I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the, um, I've, I've, to, I've taken, I don't know, maybe 30,000 photographs or 50,000. I don't know, because... You know, now uh, I published the book in 2020 in, uh, during the pandemic. And since then, I've been um, revisiting with the book. Now with the exhibition, I, I still come to Portugal. And I, now I revisit, uh, you know, all the regions. Yeah. And I still find new places, you know. So I, now I think I have to do part two of uh, this photo album because I have so many new places. It never stops, you know. I, I, I could totally understand that. And I already want book two. I haven't even got book one yet. Um, and it is available from your website, it would appear. Kat, uh, yeah, you can order. Yes, you can order, uh, order the book online on my website. I send it all over the world. Uh, can you imagine that even people from Australia... Uh, bought the book because they visited Europe and they fell in love with Portugal. So I, I, I was sending the book to Australia. It was three, three weeks. The delivery time was three weeks. You know, incredible. 
Well, yeah. it's, it's an amazing piece of work. Uh, there it is. Uh, and this is this is something that would be a beautiful gift for somebody, wouldn't it? Somebody who loves Portugal. Um, and the title is perfect. The, the album of photographs in love with Portugal. Tony, good morning to you. And sorry, you've been left out of the conversation so far. Um, <laughs> but uh, what an incredible, what an incredible um, work of devotion this is from Kat here. How did you two meet? <laughs> Hello. Uh, wow, this has been a, a, a story about two years ago, more, right, Kat? Yeah. And, um, and so really, when you meet people that are ambassadors for Portugal, and she's an ambassador through photography, I fell in love with it. I reached out to her. I saw it somewhere. I, th I think it was probably Sapu or, you know, Sapu Viagens. Yes, yes. I publish uh, my articles about Portugal on a Sapo. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And and I read the story and uh, I looked, researched a little more about her and the social media and everything. And so I reached out to her and I said, hey, Kat, uh, may I use your photographs to um, in my posts and, and just talk about Portugal itself? And so I did even a series for like a month or like two months every day, like a morning greeting. I would use one of her photos and everything. And also uh, because it was just, you know, like why reinvent the wheel? Some I, We have so many beautiful photographs, but but she has really, it's really about people that come out of, uh, they're not from Portugal. They visit Portugal. I always say, you come, <laughs> be ready. Don't come if you don't want to fall in love, right, Kat? And that's what she's yeah. done. And I love her story. And that was really is. And, you know, today's, Everything in marketing, the way she's been doing it, everything is about storytelling. So, and I'm really happy to call her a friend, although I have not met her in person yet. It seems like I have. <laughs> I'm waiting for you at my exhibition, Antonio. <laughs> yeah, there you so go. It, it's a pleasure to have her here, and uh, you know, give her the mic, give her the, the the spotlight, because believe me, I you hear it from me all the time talking about Portugal. But this is somebody from that also. Uh, has not made the move yet permanently, but she comes here a few times a year and she from north to south uh, and in between and somebody that knows Portugal too. And so definitely give her the mic. I'm I'm happy to sit back and, and listen to you ask and, and, you know, for her to share her story and her love for Portugal, for sure, Carl. Well, well thank so. you, Tony. Yeah, really thank you, Antonio, for, for your support. And I hope to see you at the exhibition. It's, it is until... 13th of um, of July in Porto, and then the exhibition goes to Lisbon. Really? Okay, so tell us about the, the uh, exhibition tour then. How did it come about? Me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you, you can uh, visit the exhibition at any time because it's all the time open uh, until 13th of July. And then it goes to Lisbon, and it, in Lisbon you... Uh, you you will be able to uh, see it in uh, my magic place in Ginsho because uh, I have my magic places uh, all over Portugal. Right. Uh, yeah, and I try to, uh, I try to um, uh, to show my exhibition in these magic places to invite people and to show uh, the magic uh, places of Portugal. One of the magic places here, uh, Vale Furado, close to. This prayer, I can't. Uh, yeah, no, the, we'll the light reflect is reflecting, but oh, let's give you the full screen, and then we might be able to do that a little bit better. Yeah, so this is a uh, prayer Vale Furado close to Nazare. Yeah, this is oh, one of okay. my magic places. From... Yeah, in Portugal, yeah. and last year the premiere of the exhibition was here, um, in the oh. bar on this beach. Uh, and now, the, uh, now uh, then the exhibition went back to Poland. Uh, uh, it was um, available uh, to see in uh, in the big cities, in Polish big cities. And now the exhibition is back here to Portugal. But just imagine that uh, I'm coming with the exhibition in my Polish car, so I drive three thousand kilometers. Amazing. Sorry, I'm just trying to show that that's a Nazare uh, beach. There, yeah, or, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Vale Furado Beach. It's yeah. a hidden hidden gem of Portugal. It's like hidden treasure because uh, you've got a knack for finding them by the sound of it. But sorry, I interrupted you by putting that on the screen. You drive your exhibition across Europe. Is that how it works? Yeah, yeah. But you know, from the beginning, uh, maybe I ca I came to Portugal with the flight only a few times, but mostly the the. The last ten years, I've been coming. I I I always come here with my car, with my Polish car, because I come here for at least two months. Uh, 
Mm. Uh, so, you know, it's not easy to pack all my equipment, photographic equipment and all the stuff for two months uh, to the for the flight. It's not easy to pack it sure. with my Polish car. Yes, I have a big Polish car, you know, and Piwetska bus. It is called Piwetska bus. And <laughs> I always come to Portugal, yes, with my Polish car. So this way, 3000 kilometers, you know, um, I know it by heart. <laughs> Incredible. I drive it every year. Yes, I mean Doug's absolutely right. What an amazing book and great lady. You're an amazing woman. Uh, this <laughs> this this journey that you pilgrimage to Portugal and and yeah. taking all these fantastic photographs. Um, so we've got you've been near Nazaré, um, Porto currently, and you're off to uh, Guincho soon, which of course is uh, a little bit outside Lisbon, isn't it? It's uh, over by. Uh, Carcavelos and, and the um, the beaches. Yes, um, it is between Cascais and Sintra, uh, yes. with the view over Cabo da Roca, ma a magic place. But I really want people to see my magic places in Portugal. Uh, I could um, I could show I could have shown them uh, the exhibition in the center of Lisbon, but I want to bring people to the you know to all these magic places so yes. it's outside lisbon but uh, you know um i hope people will visit <laughs> the exhibition. i'm sure they will i'm sure they will cat this is quite amazing what you're doing and i just I, you know i foresee just you know an in invitation after invitation i thought this was one of them actually from matty who says my magic place is my quinta everyone's home should be their magic place uh, that's true um, and also, of course, we like Cat, we have our favorite magic places around, don't we, that we discover. And Portugal certainly is full of them. Are you open to being invited around Portugal with your touring exhibition? Uh, excuse me? Are, are you open to being invited with your exhibition to different places around Portugal? Yes, if someone wants me to come with the ex exhibition, I can come. So just uh, message, <laughs> message me and... Uh, we can organize more uh, like places for the exhibition. Amazing, amazing. And you also, um, you write, you said, you do articles and workshops. So tell us more about yourself from that point of view. You're also a writer. No, I'm just a journalist. Um, so uh, a travel journalist. Yeah. So the last 10 years I've been pu publishing articles about Portugal mainly, but also about other places uh, over the world. Uh, and I published my articles uh, on Sapo here in Portugal yeah. and in Poland on different in different ma magazines. So it's I'm a portrait photographer and the other job, my job is being travel journalists. So I have two two jobs. <laughs> And, you know, do you, do you ever does, sleep? Go, go on, Tony. I, uh, exactly. I was just going to ask you to put up her professional website because she does a beautiful work, especially black and white. I love it. I love, you know, you, you, there's there's everybody can call themselves photographers nowadays if you have a phone. But there's such a thing between a professional <laughs> photographer and what she does, especially with celebrities in, in Poland. and uh, But in black and white. I love her work. I really do. Um, of yeah. course. Yeah, has... but you know what? It's so funny because um, my portraits of people are always black and white because I always say that I see people in black and white because I don't need any color to uh, to show the emotions, the eyes, and the soul of the uh, of the person. To, when I uh, take port portraits, but with travel uh, photography, with places, I need all the colors. So you can see that my travel photography is so full of uh, colors and my po po portraits yes. um, are always black and white. <laughs> it's incredible. I mean, and so generous of you, I think, as well, to offer workshops. You teach photography too, as well as marketing and all, all manner of other um, disciplines to people can yes but it's something that uh, you know all photographers do I've, uh, I've been working as a photographer for 15 years now so now i feel uh, that i can um that i can teach because i have uh, i know the all the branch and uh i can teach younger photographers so yes i published also um something like a for photographers something like a guidebook about marketing being yes. uh, doing the marketing uh, as a photographer i also opened the um, something like uh, in the university um uh, we created the i don't know how to say it in english 
in university you have specialization yes specialization uh yes uh for teaching young photographers business and marketing um so i think it's quite normal if you have you know if you work if you have worked like 15 years <laughs> in your profession Amazing. what a delight to meet you and find out more about you and so the the current exhibition is uh, available to, for people to delight in and see in porto what's the venue there cat What's there? What's the venue? Wait, 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 what's the magic place where you are exhibiting in Porto at the in moment? In Porto, yes, it's in the hotel, Salina Hotel, in the center of um, in the center of Porto, um, and uh, the address is wait, wait, wait. It's Rua. It's okay, no hurry. Let's have a quick chat with Tony while it's you're sorting close, out. It's real close to the city hall. It's uh, about two streets from behind city hall in Porto. It's real close. It's downtown. It's a small little place. Actually, curiosity. There was a client of ours, friend, friend, client, uh, um, I won't mention his name, but a uh, cat knows. And uh, he reacted to me because uh, she made a post in one of our uh, private Facebook groups that we have. And, uh, and, then, and he says, Tony, I'm actually here right now. I can't believe it. You know what I mean? Because he saw it and, <laughs> and he was there. He was doing some work because he's here for a month. Uh, uh, we're actually closing on a property with him in Porto. And he was so extremely happy. So I'm not sure. But I think, uh, Kat, you're there uh, till the 13th. But I think Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, right? Is that what it is? You want to talk about the times and then also in Ginshu? Because I know, and I know that's your magical spot. Ginshu and Iri Seid. Everyone has their place where they call home. And they ha they we love Portugal, all of it. But I know that is a special, magical place for you, right? Iri Seid and Ginshu. So if you want to talk about the two times, and the times that you have or until from Lisbon, it must be from the 14th on is I think that's where you were going, right, Carl? So back to you, my friend. Thank you. So Ginsho, so we'll have the address for the Porto exhibition. You're going to Ginsho. Did Tony just mentioned Eddie Serra as well? Are you exhibiting in Eddie Serra as well, Kat? No, no, no. Only in Ginsho for now. Okay. It's only right. in Ginsho. Yes, yes, yes. In, this, um, in the hotel also, in the hotel, the last hotel, uh, with the view over Cabo de Roca, uh, oh, uh, yes. yes, it's the place in Ginsho where you can visit the, uh, the exhibition. Uh, but now in Porto, I found the street. But if you put to Google just Selina Porto, Hotel Selina Porto, you you just uh, if you put well, to Google, tremendous. yeah, you uh, to Google Maps, you'll find it. It's uh, wait, wait, it's well, you can't uh, get rid of, you, you can't get rid of this now. Yeah, you can't get rid of us now, Kat. We are, we are all. You are now friends with this whole community, uh, and I'm looking forward to people uh, coming along to your exhibition, meeting you, and sending maybe a selfie um, to us of of, of you, uh, of maybe with you and some of your pictures there. It is, of course, Independence Day. You made reference to that, Tony. Um, uh, uh, how's it going with with the market up in the north? Are you finding that more Americans are striking out with their own independence into Portugal? <laughs> For sure, for sure, you know. What's going I, on? It's 90% of our friends that want to move to Portugal are coming from the U.S. That's always been our biggest market, uh, U.S. Yeah. and Canada. It, it was Canada Day on Saturday, by the way, too. So, um, and Typically, so, though, um, typically the Canadians are a little bit quieter about everything. Ah, eh, it depends. <laughs> you know, <laughs> You know, they're, they're, they, 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 I love Canada. I love North Americans. I think they're the easiest, uh, uh, demanding, demanding, but easiest uh, uh, buyers that are out there, um, yeah. you know, because they know they're, they're pragmatic, you know, uh, and they know what they want and you have to find it. And that's what it's about. But, but definitely today I'll be celebrating also with my grilled chicken and grilled ribs and, and sausage and doing, you know, the whole holiday, you know, I celebrate the, um, the, more of the of the u.s holidays here too the fourth of july is one of those holidays uh definitely just like thanksgiving with the turkey right uh, what what fourth of july i couldn't celebrate without having a nice barbecue with friends so that's what i'm having that's my fourth of july my friend so with more more americans moving to portugal are we finding that we are having fourth of july celebrations are you going to, uh, along to something formal and celebratory that later on today no no, no, just with some friends. Actually, they're Portuguese friends out there. <laughs> okay. yes. Well, a lot of Portuguese people have lived in America, of course, and might have come back and, and still want to yeah. celebrate their happy times in America. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think, you know, even, you know, when, well, my mom and dad, you know, they're no longer here. But when once they moved back from, 
a lifetime also in the U.S. You know, they said it's mandatory. They celebrate all the U.S. holidays, um, especially Thanksgiving, Fourth of July, and a few others. And uh, uh, definitely it's a celebration. But it's mostly, you know what? I don't think it's more the celebration. I think it's become a habit, a, a cultural thing, barbecue outside. That's what it is, fireworks and barbecue. You know, oh, good for independence, you. independence from what? I think, you know, the uh, the U.S. right now, they need independence from a lot of things. So maybe a new independence <laughs> will be coming. <laughs> There's certainly, yes, around the world. I mean, there's, there is this sort of unsettled sense, isn't there? So um, we at least we can drink to that today, to, to, to peaceful resolution of people's differences. Um, don't forget, Carl says, Matty, uh, Portuguese people like to celebrate anything, anytime. Yes, I guess so. so <laughs> happy Independence Day today. Uh, and that's like a party within a party, because I think a lot of people are mid Festa anyway. And we've got the massive celebration coming up in Tamar this weekend. Back up to the north, though. Our man in the Mino, any more secrets? We've, we, we've got Kat with her magic places. Have you got any more magic places or any news to share with us about the market or, or other beautiful spots we've yet to discover in the north, Tony? Uh, no, you know, I'm going to pass the mic to Kat. She was just up in Caminha, and that's the that's the view that you see behind uh, me, right? Uh, that's okay. something that she's discovering, one of Portugal's best-kept secrets. I've always told her about it. She spends, she likes more, you know, She everyone has their places, but she was up here, and I didn't, it was just impossible to meet with you, Kat. But if you want to talk about probably the Mino itself, your own personal experience, somebody that, you know, again, don't take my word for it. I've been living here for almost a, a lifetime since uh, as a kid coming and visiting and, and now here 22 years. But, you know, what are your feelings? You know, that view there, when the Rio Mino, when the Mino River, before it goes out and hugs the Atlantic, it yeah. looks to it looks to the east and it sees Santa Tecla. It gives it a nice little kiss it looks to Caminha and it said i'll be back right before it hugs what I'll are your feelings you what, i'll tell you what cat before you answer that let's bring another fan of the north onto the screen he's he's joining us from norway this morning it's johannes fra Norde. uh here he is on the screen john thank you for joining us uh it, from norway this morning is it a bit chilly up there it's uh it's about um what is it uh what 10 Celsius? 10 Celsius. Okay. Um, yeah, it's a little bit warmer than that uh, here in Portugal, John. Uh, how was your road trip up north? I mean, you had some impeccable timing. You were in Paris last week, weren't you? I think your timing was excellent.